Hi guys, Jim here with another Sudoku video. Today we'll be going through a miracle Sudoku as part of the collection presented by the Cracking the Cryptic team. Cracking the Cryptic are a couple of YouTubers who, um, well, they have a YouTube channel for one thing, um, being YouTubers, that sort of comes with the territory, but also um, they are um, a couple of um, puzzle solvers, right? So they solve, it, solve puzzles on, on YouTube and um, their channel is uh, very successful, very popular, and no wonder because it's really entertaining stuff. Um, they solve puzzles really well. They solve a lot harder puzzles than I can, um, and they do it with a plum. And I strongly recommend checking out the channel if this is something that you're interested in. And frankly, you're here watching me solve the Sudoku, so you probably would like their channel more, maybe. Um, but also, they've they've sort of um, published these collections of puzzles, which is one of the ones I'm playing through today. Um, it's a uh, they're all Sudoku variants, and um, and by I'll explain what I mean by a Sudoku variant shortly, in case you're um, wondering what I'm on about. Um, but yeah, you can get them on Steam or on your phone, um, which uh, you know is great. Uh, obviously, it's a great time killer on on your phone. But I also think these puzzles are some of the best puzzles I've ever played through personally. Um, they are handcrafted, so they're not you know sort of done by a computer and need a bit of guessing around to figure it out. It's you know they're all very logically beautiful the solves and, it, and it's sort of very intentional and you can kind of pick up on patterns and stuff they've also got hints handwritten hints so um if you get stuck so anyway yeah look check them out i think they're a great value um but yeah uh today um i get to look at one of their miracle sudokus and uh yeah let's uh, jump in and so what do i mean by miracle sudoku well we're about to find out so firstly um if you recall um if you've seen any of my previous videos we play the earlier puzzles to unlock the later ones we're on puzzle number four but it's actually my fifth puzzle that i'm solving it's a two star difficulty and it is a full-blown miracle sudoku so look at that grid um right so uh, they get a little intro every time they introduce one of these new subcategories so welcome to miracle sudoku in miracle sudoku every row column and box must have all the numbers from one to nine exactly once the usual rules of sudoku in addition two directly adjacent cells cannot contain consecutive numbers and you cannot have the same number twice within a knight's move or a king's move in chess good luck and so um, in chess knights can move two up and one across and kings can move um, in the eight eight cells directly around it um, so yeah those are the rules and you may be looking at this and thinking what the hell there's no way this actually solves but it it, it does and it's astonishing so this is really good fun certainly one of my favorite um types of sudoku uh yeah so um uh, maybe i'll just give a little bit more of an explain of what i mean so what i mean by um knight move and king's move so a, a king's move means this eight as well as sort of being used up in the um row the column and the box so obviously an eight can't go in any of these cells an eight also can't go in a king's move around it. So a king can move um, sort of any cell that's di directly adjacent, diagonally or horizontally. So that rules out these cells. So these cells also cannot be an eight. Um, and then the knight's move just adds to this. So a knight in chess can move two up and one across. So that can't be an eight. That can't be an eight. That, 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 and that. They can all not be eights. And you can actually see it's quite handy. So if you click on a cell, it shows you what cells are sort of impacted by it um and yeah and uh, so that's how we play oh and also they is non-consecutive as well right so you can't put numbers next to each other um so six can't be next to a seven five can't be next to a four that sort of thing um yeah so let's get going um right well um so the way so i do remember how to do these now um so i mean the first you, so the first thing you can look at is something like okay well seven um up in this cell can't be next to an eight can't be next to a six so seven is limited to these cells but that really won't get you that far what you need to do is actually look at like so for the, so for instance this eight um in this box we can actually see because the cells are highlighted it's quite nice in this box eight is limited to these three cells now normally you wouldn't do pencil marks for three or more cells in one box, but you, ha you can't have no choice with these with these puzzles. Um, and eight is limited in here. Now you can see some highlighting going on here, and this is where this app is really powerful. 
Um, because there's an 8 in these three cells, what it's saying is we don't know where that 8 is, but it for sure sees all of these cells. You might think, okay, that's a bit weird. So what does that mean? So if that is an 8, then obviously that cell is ruled out because it's in the same row. That cell is ruled out because it's a king's move, and that cell is moved out because it's a knight's move. Okay, so if the 8 is there, it can't go here, here, or here. Okay, If the 8 is here, these two are ruled out because of the row, and this one because of the king's move. And if the 8 is here, this is ruled out because of the row, this is ruled out because of the row, and this is ruled out because of the knight's move. So it doesn't matter where the 8 goes. These three cells are cannot be 8s. And actually, we've already got a digit in the grid. Um, and the reason for that is if you look down in this box, it's the same thing. Okay, could you put an 8 here? No. If you put an 8 here, it would see all three of these, and then there'd be no place for an 8 in the box. So um, this 8 rules out this one and this one. This 8 rules out these two, uh, these three, I should say. And then this is a 7. So you can't put an 8 next to a 7 um, because it's non consecutive. So the 8 must go there. So it's extraordinary, but you can actually place an 8 in this grid so the 8 goes there um, and then that bounces back into this box and the 8 goes there in that box it's amazing um, yeah I just I just love it it's so good um, interestingly so if we think about 8s um, what cell these cells are next to an 8 so you can't put a 9 in these cells so there is a 9 in here in one of these three cells so there must be a nine in this little horseshoe shape here. That's fine. We'll leave that for now. Um, and in, and I think this puzzle, yeah, this puzzle is very symmetric, isn't it? So that five has the same impact here. So the five must go here. This five, the, that rules the fives out from here. So the five also is ruled out from here, here, and here, and can't go next to the six. So that's a five, and that's a five because you can't put five next to the eight. Pwah, amazing. Um, okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, well, let's carry on working through fives then for now. So five in this box must be in one of these three. One of these three. Um, and if I combine that um, with this, uh, one of these must be a five. Um, and then this forces a fire to be here that's not that helpful actually I'm gonna note it but it's not actually that helpful um, ah okay yeah so um, where does eight now go in this box so this box suddenly becomes more valuable for an eight because eight has ruled out all of this lot and then this eight rules out these three as well so eight can't go here so suddenly we've got eight locked into there then that's really interesting because it asks it forces us to ask the question where does eight go in this column so you can't put eight in any of these three cells because they all see this one. That by knight's move, that by king's move, that by regular Sudoku. Can't put an eight here because of the eight in the box. That sees it by king's move. That sees this eight by knight's move. This is in the row. This this eight is blocked, ruled out by this eight in um, uh, knight's move. And then this cell can't be an eight because there's an eight in this row. So suddenly this cell is an eight from nowhere. It's crazy. Um, so uh, that must be powerful in this box. Yes, it is. So in this box, then eights are limited to two places over here. Again, because of the power of this, this eight in the corner rules out more than half the box. It's amazing. Um, so if we look at that, so the eights here combined with eights here is very powerful. So eights can only be in one of these cells. And then that's interesting, right? Because that rules an eight out from here. Uh, so if I uh, put get rid of that eight there, then um, is that the end of the line for eight? Yeah, it sort of is, isn't it? Eight can kind of go here. Okay, but then I think we do the same. We play the same game with fives, right? So if you put if we think we can put fives here, um, and in this box we can put fives here, therefore. Um, you know these fives uh, are locked in these two row in these two columns so we know that in here the five can only go in this place but actually it can't go here or here because it will see these two fives so actually five can only go there oh, excuse me so that's a five um, 
that's as far as I got there as well, wasn't it? Um, okay, well, what about sixes now then? Yeah, so sixes in this box can't go in the bottom box. Where do sixes go? Well, they can't go next to the seven and they can't go here because of the one in there. So there's a six limited to one of these two places in this box, which then rules sixes out from here. So it's this. there's definitely a six in one of these two. This is next to a five, so that can't be a six. So suddenly that's a six. Um, uh, that place is a six in one of these two. It's just amazing. That places a six in one of these two because these two sixes act as a virtual six in this column. And then these two virtual sixes, if you like, gang up on this box and force a six to be in one of these two. You can't put a six next to a five, so those two are a six. Well, those two contain a six. And then I assume that I can do exactly the same thing backwards with sevens. Yeah, well, it, I can do it even quicker, right? Because now there's a six here, so you can't put seven there or there because it's next to the eight. So that must be a seven. Sevens are then limited to that cell in that box. Uh, and they're limited over here as well. Okay, then we ask, maybe we ask the question, where does four go in this box then? So suddenly four can't go next to five. So four must be in one of these two cells. Um, yeah, this unfortunately are a bunch of consecutive. So the only available one that's interesting is nine. I mean, that, that is interesting, right? So nine are, ah, and we know nine's down here actually, don't we? Um, so nine in this box can't connect to the eight and there's a nine in one of these cells. So actually, nine is in here. And then in this box, it can't connect to the eight. So nine is up here. Ah, oh, surely this box is like ruined for nines now. Yeah, so nines are limited to one of these three cells. <clears throat> uh, you can't put a nine next to an eight, so that is no longer a nine. Nine in here, so nine is limited to one of these cells. And then again, we've got nines limited to these two rows in these two columns. Sorry, not these two rows, but but in these two boxes, they're limited to these two columns. So I know that in this cell. In this box, there must be a nine in one of these three, and it can't go next to the eight, so the nine must go there. Ah, and that's lovely, isn't it? Because then these two cells flip back onto this cell. So that sees that one by king's move, and that sees that one by knight's move. So whichever one of these cells, that one cannot be a nine. Um, so yeah, this is this is lovely. So that nine is going to vanish as an option, which puts a nine here, which removes nines as the, from these cells as an option, which makes that a nine. So that just is a nine. And then that's a, that's a, oh, the nines are in, in this box. Nines go here, because it can't connect to the eight. And this is a five, nine pair all of a sudden. So five, nine. So nothing else can go in those two cells. So where does eight go in this box? Well, it can't go next to the nine and it can't go next can't go in this row because of the eight in the row so it is limited to one of these two cells which means in this yeah and then and then lovely and then these two eights come across smack those eights so those so that can't be an eight <laughs> and look yeah and then that limits this one to just this one cell here that must be the eight um uh is that powerful on fives it is so the fives in uh, are now limited to this row so in this set in this box that can't be the five so fives are now in two spaces in here um what about f oh we've already done fours haven't we oh that's interesting yeah so where does four go in this column so four can't go next to the five so these two cells are ruled out so four must be up here somehow and it's interesting because the, the any logic i've done for like because the pets because it started off so symmetrical this um puzzle anything i've done on fives and sixes i can do on sevens and eights um but we'll do that in a sec so six is limited to these two cells in this box which then bounces back over here rules that one out so that must be the six in the box that must be the six in this box because that's really powerful look how much of the box this rules out that's huge it literally just leaves two places if you have so that yeah, that's crazy. So it, so that 
any cell on the edge of the box can only go in those two places. That's mad, isn't it? Um, uh, oh, in this cell, right, okay. So fives are in one of these two places, but that's a six, so you can't put a five next to a six. So that must be the five. Which limits five to two cells down there. Okay, let's ask the question again then. So what about fours in this box? So if there's a virtual four here, which rules these two out, the four can't go next to the five. So actually we've got fours limited to two places up here. That then plays over back into this box and puts put fours in one of the two places there. Um, Ah, yes, yeah, so this 8, sorry, I should, could have seen this a while ago. That 8 sorts out this 9, 5 pair, because obviously you can't put a 9 next to an 8. So that 9 and 5 are in that order. This will absolutely explode in a minute. Like, as soon as you get enough of the grid, everything just kind of falls, falls at your feet. Not quite there just yet. Sevens. It's interesting. We have actually, haven't actually got all that much on sevens. Well, if I ask the question of where does seven go in this box, well, this is a virtual seven. Well, so I can't put seven here because it'd be next to the eight, and I can't put seven there. So seven is limited to two to these cells here. Is that useful? It's not as useful as I'd hoped it would be. Okay. Well, you know, it's suddenly become a bit more useful. So the sevens. This seven here is doing work on this box, as you can see. And then the sevens in this column also rule these out. So sevens are in one of two places in this box, which removes this as an option for a seven. So sevens are now here. Sevens can't be there. Ah, okay, yeah. So in this row, where does seven go? Well, actually, you could have seen this a while ago. Can't go next to the eight, and it can't go next to the six. So that is suddenly a seven. Amazing. Ah, oh, okay. And then can you put seven here in this box? Well, you can't because there's an eight either side of it. I don't know which one it is, but it's definitely going to be next to that cell. So I can't put seven there. So in this box, seven is limited to one of these two. Now, this is interesting. I love this logic. So when you've got a domino like this, these two are sevens, you can't possibly put an eight or a six in these two cells because it would force the other cell to be a seven, therefore next to it. So this cell can't be an 8. So I've got it pencil marked as being an 8. Well, it can't be, because if that's an 8, that would have to be a 7, and it can't be next to the 8. So that is ruled out from being an 8, and in fact, an 8 will now go over there. Um, and we're limited now to 8s down here in these little X wings. So I don't think we're going to get much more progress on that for the time being. Ah, oh, OK, lovely. So 9s now. I don't know when I did this, but 9s are now limited in this box. And that then sorts out this 8, so that can't be an 8 because it'd be next to the 9. So that's the 8, and that's the 8. And I think that's all the 8s. Yes, lovely. Now surely that means we can make some progress on 9s. Well, 9s are, li are limited in this box to two cells, aren't they? What about this? Does this do much damage? Well, it kind of does, actually. Yeah, so look, the... The nines being here, in fact, this is a six nine pair, I've only just realized. So that's a six nine pair, so that's nice to know. But also, the nines being here limits um, the nines in this box, but actually, this cell also obviously rules these out as being the nines. So there's a nine in one of these three cells, and that means that one can't be a nine, so that one must be a nine. Ah, and then that sorts out this six nine pair, so that's a nine, that's a nine, that's a nine, that's a six. As I just said, and then that nine is resolved in here. So I've got rid of all the nines as well. So that's lovely. So eights and nines are done. Sevens should probably be next on my hit list. Yeah, so seven can't go here because it'd be next to an eight. And it can't go here because it's next to a six. So that's a seven. Yeah, this is now. Now we're into sort of like hurry up territory. So seven is ruled out from there by King's move with that one. So that must be the seven. Therefore, that must be a seven. Um, these sevens need an eight or a six or something to resolve, so I'm not too worried about that for just now. This six can't go next to that seven, so that's a six. Um, these fives rule out sixes, so yeah, so I can't put a six in either of these cells, but that 
power of this domino is amazing. So um, in this box, where does six go? It has to go here. That sorts out that six. And that gives us the last six in the grid. Does that? Yeah, that sorts out the sevens as well. So that six is next to a seven. So seven and seven to do that last sevens. Right, okay. And now, now we're firing. So that's a five. That's a five. That's a five. What about fours now? Fours are going to fly as well. Yep. So we can't put four next to a five. So that's a four. Um, that limits four to one of two places in this box. Uh, in this box, you can't put a four here or here or here because it would be next to one of these three fives. So that must be a four. That put limits a four into that box, which gives us this four of these two. You can't put a four next to a five. So that must be the four. That gives us a four in that cell. This four is sorted out. This four is sorted out. Here's a four. You have a four. And you have a four. There's a four in one of those two. And this is a four. That's a four. Yeah. And then you just continue to go around. Okay. Where does three go? So three's limited in this cell because you can't put it next to a four. Three's limited in this cell. Uh, it's limited here. Uh, limited to one of these two, limited to one of these two. There'll be one. There'll be one somewhere that just that just breaks and gives us what we need. Um, uh, excuse me, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, if I just click on threes, what am I looking at? Uh, okay, so in this box now, one of these two must be a three. And in this box, one of these two must be a three. What am I not seeing? Mm. Ah, that's what I'm not seeing, the, that one there. So that was, um, yeah, so uh, it's amazing. Like this is the only bit of logic that means this puzzle is solvable now at this stage. So how they constructed this puzzle, I just, blows my mind but that cannot be a three because it's next to a four so yeah and then this will just play all the way around the grid so that's not a three that's that sorts out that three 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 and that sorts out that three okay brilliant and then you ask okay same question on twos well in this box that can't can't put two next to a three so that's a two 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 um that's a two and that's a two uh oh i didn't put my three in this box did i sorry uh yeah that's a three <laughs> uh and then yeah and then it's just ding 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 i think I've, i don't actually think if i put one here it's not gonna yeah it didn't do anything <laughs> okay well these are ones so uh Count them up with me, people. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the ninth one in the grid. Oh, what a puzzle. I love full miracle puzzles where you're given like three digits and, a, you know, not even that many rules. Amazing. Just amazing. So, yeah, definitely one of my favorite types of puzzle. And that was the easiest variant of it, right? So they're going to get hard and they do get very hard. You really kind of scratching your head at some of these. Um, but yeah, delighted to have solved that puzzle on the channel. Finally, when I when I started doing this, I was like, I can't wait. Can't wait till I get to that one. So I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys did, too. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Cheers.